of the Texas Rangers, starring Joel McRae as Ranger Jace Pearson. Another authentic reenactment of a case transcribed from the files of the Texas Rangers. Dates and places in the following story are fictitious for obvious reasons. The events themselves are a matter of record. Right now, I'd like to give you some of the listening highlights of tomorrow's Monday Night of Music on NBC. The life and music of Franz Schubert is the basis for the Railroad Hours presentation of Blossom Time tomorrow evening. Starring Gordon McRae and Nadine Connor... Blossom Time is one of Sigmund Romberg's most famous musical romances. Be sure to hear it tomorrow as presented by the Railroad Hour. Also tomorrow evening, over most of these stations, the Telephone Hour welcomes Lily Paws, famous Metropolitan Opera star. As the initial Telephone Hour guest of 1952, Miss Paws continues the schedule of appearances that have made her one of the favorite soloists heard over this distinguished program. Miss Paws will present as her featured selection an aria for which she is particularly noted the lovely bell song from the opera Lachme, while Donald Voorhees and the Telephone Hour Orchestra lists among their pieces the gay festival at Baghdad by Rimsky-Korsakoff. And now, back to Tales of the Texas Rangers. And now, from the files of the Texas Rangers, the case called Birds of a Feather. It is three o'clock in the morning of February 23rd, 1940. The cold rain is falling in the town of Baker, Texas. A car drives slowly through the darkness, comes to a stop near the Union High School. The two occupants sit, looking up the street toward the school grounds. Roll down the window, Freddy. You can see better. What? Oh, sure, Ben, sure. Yeah, we got it set for 8.45 this morning. You come down this street heading for the school. We'll be right here waiting for him. Yeah, but... Suppose it don't show up. He will. And I've been checking it every day for a week. Yeah, but suppose it don't. Suppose something goes wrong. Nothing's going to go wrong. Joe's out the shack now. We want to have everything ready for him. You'll be driving then and we... What's the matter with you, Freddy? You ain't even listening. Uh, sure, sure. Heard every word you said. Well, what did I say? Uh, Joe's out at the shack. Uh, and what? Well, I guess I must have missed the rest. Yeah, you must have. You're scared, ain't you, Freddy? Ain't you? Okay, so I'm scared. Who wouldn't be on a job like this? Look, Ben, why don't we stick to filling stations? We're making a living. A living? Fifteen bucks here, twenty there. What kind of living's that? We'll get more off this job than we hit in a hundred filling stations. I don't like it, Ben. I just don't like it. All right, let's get out of here. Roll up your window. All right. i tell you something, Freddy. Joe ain't gonna be happy when he finds out you've been crying like this. I know, but Now, I... shut up and listen. This thing we got planned, it's big. We can't afford no slip-ups. Now, just relax. Three of us always done all right. Ah, sure, but we never tried nothing like this before. Oh, sure, if it goes okay, you win a lot. But if... If you lose, it's for good. We ain't gonna lose. Well, I... Okay, Ben. You're set for the job. I, I won't argue. Only... I'm pulling out. You what? Well, I can't help it if I'm scared, can I? Well, why'd you say something? Oh, look, Ben, you, you and Joe can handle a job. I don't need three men. I, I might just last you up. Yeah. Yeah, you just might. Well, I, I wouldn't do you no good feeling like I do, you know. I, I'll catch a train back to Dallas this morning. Sure, Freddy, sure. I wouldn't want you to do nothing you're scared of. Oh, I'm sure glad you feel that way, Ben. I was... Afraid you'd be so. Me, Freddy? No. We've been through too much together for me to get so at you. Now, if you don't want to... What's the matter, man? The car feels funny. It must be this old road. No, it ain't the road. It feels like the back tire's flat. Maybe I better stop. Get the flash out of the dashboard and take a look, huh, Freddy? All right. You see anything? Right rear looks okay. Well, it's wet out here. What about this and bring a light over? All right. 
Well, that looks okay, too. Well, how can you imagine them things, Ben? Yeah. Hammer the flash, Freddy. Sure? Yeah. Now, let's get... Ben, what you doing with the gun? You were right, Freddy. Joe and me can't handle the job alone. We don't need you. Ben, no. Like you said yourself, you might loss us up. But I said I was leaving town. You, you never hear from me again. Yeah, ben. but you'll know about the job, Freddy. You'll know who done it. Ben, don't be crazy. Ben, <laughs> Shortly after seven that morning, a farmer on his way to town noticed a man lying in some brush by the side of the road. He was still alive, but unconscious. While an ambulance took him to the hospital in Vega, the sheriff requested the assistance of a Texas ranger. Ranger Jace Pearson was assigned, joining the sheriff in the hospital waiting room an hour later. Hello, Sheriff. Uh, Howdy, Jace. Glad you could make it so Uh, quick. I was over in the next county. This man who was shot, is he still alive? Just barely. Doc said he'd call me if there's any change. Find any identification? Draft card we found on him said Fred Meter. Gave his home as Dallas. You ever see him around before? No, he might have been just passing through Baker. Mm, The report I got said he was found on a side road outside of town. That's right. About two miles up the old Copper Canyon Road. Mm, Probably wasn't just passing through then. Sounds more like he was heading for some place around here. Maybe you're right. I'm hoping he can tell us about it directly. I better send his name and description into headquarters anyhow. Maybe they can give us a lead. Now, here's the doc now. Oh, anything new, Doc? You and the ranger better come with me, Sheriff. Sure. Come on, Jace. Is Meter conscious, Doctor? Uh, not yet. But there's a chance he may be any minute. You think he'd be able to talk? Yeah, if he regains consciousness at all, he'll probably be able to talk. Mm, you think he might die without coming to? It's possible. He's lost a lot of blood. And the bullets entered his left lung. Here we are. You can leave him now, nurse. I'll stay with him. Looks the same as he did a while back, Doc. Mm, not quite. Pulse a little weaker. Respiration slower. I'm afraid he's just about finished. No chance of his pulling through. Huh? Mm-hmm. Sounds like he's coming too. How about it, Doc? Well, sometimes just before then, mm-hmm. they do. Mm-hmm. You see? He's opening his eyes. Mm-hmm. It's all right if I talk to him now? Certainly. Mm-hmm. Fred, mm-hmm. can you hear me? Mm-hmm. I think he did hear you, Jace. Who shot you, Fred? Tell us, who shot you? Look, Jace, he's trying to say something. Yeah. Oh, yeah. J- John Warren. John Warren. Wait, just a minute, Sheriff. <laughs> I'm sorry, Ranger. Yeah. Thanks, Doctor. Let's go, Sheriff. You know the name John Warren, Sheriff? I sure do, Jace. This meter fella, he's all wrong. Why, John Warren's one of the leading citizens in Baker. Does he live nearby? About a mile out of town. Jace, this don't make sense. I know John well. He wouldn't have any connection with a kid like that. That's something we better make sure of. Come on, Sheriff. We're going to visit Mr. Warren. It was 9.30 a.m. when we left the hospital. I phoned headquarters, gave them all the information I had on Fred Meter, and asked for a report as quickly as possible. Then we headed for John Warren's home. It was a rambling ranch-type house set back in the low hills just outside town. Mr. Warren opened the door for us himself. Howdy, John. Well, Sheriff, this is a pleasant surprise. Come in, come in. Thanks. This is Ranger Pearson, John. Howdy, Ranger. Come on, over here by the fire. Well, sit down, sit down. Ah, Sure glad you stopped by. I'm afraid this isn't a social call, Mr. Warren. Oh, well, no matter. Glad to see you anyhow. It gets lonely around here. Boys at school all day. <laughs> you know, sometimes I think I shouldn't have retired so young. <laughs> uh, you and the sheriff want some coffee, Ranger? No, thanks. I'd like to ask you some questions, Mr. Warren. Well, sure. Go ahead. Early this morning, a young man named Fred Meter was shot on a side road near Baker. That's so? 
Well, sorry to hear it. Sorry to hear it. It don't help the town to have things like that happen here. Oh, no reflection on you, Sheriff. Uh, you know who shot the fellow? I'm coming to that. The sheriff and I were with him in the hospital just before he died. He mentioned your name. My name? Why, that's crazy. I, I didn't know this, uh... This... Fred Meter. Yeah, Fred Meter. I never even heard of him. Well, Sheriff, you and me have been friends for near ten years. You, you don't believe this stuff, do you? He did mention your name, John. Well, I, I don't know what to say. I, I just don't know what to say. You haven't always lived around here, have you, Mr. Warren? No, no. I moved here ten years ago after my wife died. And where'd you live before? Dallas. Got some oil leases near there. Fred Meter was from Dallas, too. You sure you didn't know him? Ranger, you've got to believe me. I, I don't know what this is all about, but uh, there's some mistake somewhere that there's got to be. Maybe there is, Mr. Warren. But until we find out what it is, we'd like you to stay in town. Let's go, Sheriff. We drove back to the sheriff's office, arriving there just before noon. Sheriff went in to talk to his deputy while I stayed at the trailer to give charcoal his feet bag. Five minutes later, I joined the sheriff in his office. Chase, look at this, will you? What is it? A message from Austin. Deputy just gave it to me. Anything about Fred Meter? You bet there is. Fred Meter had a record. Three convictions for larceny. Filling station jobs. Anything else? Yeah. Seems he worked with a gang. Picked up each time with two other fellas. Ben Morphy and Joe Wills. That could be something. We get out a pickup on them. Uh, there's something else, Jace. Fred Meter, Ben Morphy, and Joe Wills all worked at one time for the Warren Oil Company. John Warren's outfit? That's it. Get your hat, Sheriff. I've just thought of a few more questions to ask Mr. Warren. <laughs> Funny he don't answer. His car's still in the garage. Try again, Sheriff. Who's there? Ranger Pearson, Sheriff Holmes. Go away. You better open up, John. I said go away. I reckon I had him all wrong, Jason. Let me handle it, Sheriff. All right, Mr. Warren. If you want it that way, we'll be back with a warrant for your arrest. Why do you want to come around bothering me? Why don't you go away and leave me be? Let us in, John. I... Come on. Why didn't you want to see us, Mr. Warren? I... I can't tell you. All right, we'll skip that for a minute. This morning you said you didn't know Fred Meter. That's right. How many times have I got to tell you? How about Ben Morphy and Joe Wills? You know them? I never heard of them. Now, why don't you go away and leave me be? Mr. Warren, all three of those men worked for your oil company. Well, maybe they did. Had hundreds of men working for me. I didn't know all the names. What's that got to do Have with... Have you forgotten that Fred Meter named you just before he died? I... No. You want to tell us why he did? All right, I'll tell you. I didn't know when you were here before, now I do. It wasn't me that Meter was talking about. He said your name, John. I heard him. It wasn't my name. Did you ever stop to think that I... I've got a son... Young Johnny? But he's just a kid. Yeah, just a kid. And they're going to kill him. My boy. Mr. Warren. They said if I told the police, they'd kill him. I don't want him to die, Ranger. You hear me? I want my boy alive. Easy now, John. What's this? Don't about? you understand? This, this note I just got. They've kidnapped my boy. <laughs> In a moment, we will continue with Tales of the Texas Rangers, starring Joel McRae as Ranger Jace Pearson. Here is an urgent message for all ship's radio officers. The Federal Maritime Administration is calling all former Merchant Marine radio officers to come back to sea. Right now, scores of ships are riding at anchor, loaded and ready to sail. Their cargoes are vitally needed by our fighting forces and by our allies. Especially right now, the need for radio officers is acute. If you have had six months Merchant Marine radio operating experience since January 1935 on any kind of FCC license, the American Radio Association, CIO, will help you get an emergency license to ship out at once. You will earn more than $600 a month. 
Former radio men are urged to write, phone, or wire to the American Radio Association, 5 Beekman Street, New York City, which will put you in touch with the port office nearest your home. Or go now to the American Radio Association, 5 Beekman Street, New York City. And now, back to Tales of the Texas Rangers. We continue now with Tales of the Texas Rangers and our authentic story, Birds of a Feather. The kidnap note had arrived in the mail that morning, but Warren had not picked it up until a few minutes before we arrived. It was a crudely printed message, unsigned and mailed the night before in Baker. It asked $10,000 for the return of the boy. The money was to be brought in $50 bills to a shack in Copper Canyon at 4 o'clock that afternoon. It was now 1.15. While we read the note, Warren paced back and forth across the room. John, walking back and forth like that ain't gonna do no good. Why don't you sit down? Sure, you can say that. It's not your boy they got out there in the cold. Now, John, that ain't fair. You know I feel bad about this. I know you do, Sheriff. I... I'm sorry. Mr. Warren, are you sure they've actually picked up your son? Well, they must have. I called the school right after I got the note. Johnny never showed up there today. That means they've had him since before nine this morning. What's the use of talking about it? Just let me leave the money and get my boy back. We'd like to help you get him back. You've read what I said in the note. If I bring the police in, they'll kill him. Mr. Warren, what I'm going to say will sound pretty blunt, but I want you to think about it. No, I can't think. Now, just a minute. You must believe that once the kidnappers get the money, they're going to take the trouble to bring your son back. Well, I... The Ranger's right, John. They wouldn't do that. Too much risk getting caught. Well, you, you mean that even if I leave the money, that they'll kill Johnny? I'm not saying they will, but they might. Look at it this way. Sure, the note said they'd bring your son back, but did it say when or how? Well, no. I've seen a lot of these cases, Mr. Warren. I know how tragically most of them end because the victim doesn't call in the police. All right. What do you want me to do? First of all, you've got to understand one thing. We'll do our best to help you. But it's humanly impossible to guarantee anything. I understand that, Ranger. Good. Now, let's see. It's 120. How long will it take us to get to Copper Canyon, Sheriff? Well, if we cut across the back of this ranch, it shouldn't take us over 20 minutes on horses. Good. You got a horse for the Sheriff, Mr. Warren? I sure have. Corral's full of them. Is there some place we can watch the shack without being seen? I reckon the best place would be along the rim of the canyon. They wouldn't spot us there. I don't suppose you have all that cash handy, Mr. Warren. I'll have to get it from the bank. You know any of the bank officials well? The president. One of my best friends. I'll get the money directly from him. Have him mark the bills and record the serial numbers. Well, he'll want to know why. Tell him. But ask him not to say anything to anybody. All right, Ranger. We'll be taken off now. You can ride to the canyon as soon as you have the money. You uh, you want me to leave it there just like they said? That's right. We'll be watching. And we're going to count on catching whoever picks it up. I contacted headquarters by radio and requested an area blockade of the region around Baker. Then the sheriff and I started off. It was two o'clock when we reached the rim of Copper Canyon. An icy wind was blowing in from the north. We dismounted and eased over to the edge of the ridge. A shack was clearly visible 200 yards below. We waited. At 3.55, we spotted Warren riding up the canyon. He's right on time, Jace. You reckon somebody's waiting for him in that shack? Maybe. Shouldn't be long before we find out. Don't it strike you funny that they only asked 10000 John must be worth close to a million. They could have got 50000 easy. Yeah, this is a small-time larceny gang, Sheriff. 10000 must look pretty big to them. Yeah. Poor John. Sure hope we can get that kid back to him. We're going to make a good try. There he goes. Open the door of the shack. Uh-huh. Better get ready. If there's anybody in there, we don't want to lose him. I'm ready. But one of the kidnappers is in there. You could pluck him easy with that rifle when he comes out. That wouldn't be any good, Sheriff. And we'd never find out where they're hiding the boy. There's John again. Jeez, he's waving at us to come down. Now, what... Come on, Sheriff. Let's go down and see what he wants. There's something I don't like about this, Jace. Why would John beckon us down here like he did? There's only one way to find out. We'll know in a minute. I don't see him around. He must have gone back into the shack. 
Oh, oh, charking. Oh, boy. Be careful moving in, Sheriff. Maybe some kind of trap. Mr. Warren? It's all right, Ranger. Come on in. Look. Look what's in this cage. I'll be darned. Pigeons. What's that strapped on their backs? Capsules to carry messages or money. They're homing pigeons, Sheriff. I knew it wouldn't work, Ranger. These men are clever. They don't take chances. Did they leave any instructions? Yes, yes. Please. What's it say, Jace? Mr. Warren is supposed to divide the money in ten parts and put it in those capsules on the pigeons. Yes, and then I release the pigeons and they fly wherever the men are. We're licked, Ranger. I'm not so sure. But if I don't do like they say, they'll kill my boy. You'll do exactly as they say, Mr. Warren, as these pigeons are going to lead us to your son. But, Jace... We can't follow homing pigeons on horseback. Not alone, Sheriff. We're going to have help. What kind of help? A plane. I'll use that walkie-talkie out there on my saddle. Have our nearest unit contact Austin. Ask him to send one of the Ranger planes over here. Sounds like a good idea, Jeeks. Suppose they do bring a plane in. How will that help you find my boy? We won't release the pigeons till the plane gets here. Then the air unit will keep radio contact with us and lead us to the place where the pigeons land. You... You reckon it'll work? I hope so. You stay here with Mr. Warren, Sheriff. I'll be back in ten minutes. I rode to higher ground so my radio signal would carry. I contacted a highway patrol car. It relayed my message to Austin. Headquarters said they could have Unit 902, our ranger plane overhead, in 25 minutes. Then I went down to the shack again, and we waited. Plane should be getting here any time now, Jace. I wish they'd hurry. Yeah, thought I heard it a second ago. Yeah, there it is. In from the southeast. Where? Oh, I see it now. How about the pigeons, Mr. Warren? Yeah, they're all ready to go. Bring the cage out of the shack, will you, Sheriff? Sure. You uh, think the plane sees us yet? I don't know, but I can call him now. Unit 10 to Unit 902. Go ahead, Unit 902. Unit 10 next to shack at north end of canyon floor. Can you spot us? Gotcha. Relay instructions. Pigeons are all set, Chase. Fine. This unit will release 10 pigeons. Follow them and locate landing place. Request you maintain radio contact with us. Stand by for release of pigeons. 10 4, Unit 902, clear. All right, Sheriff. Open the cage and let the pigeons go. They're not wasting any time getting away. We've held it up too long. We're half an hour late now. Don't worry, Mr. Warren. The men who are waiting probably think they're pretty safe. Pigeons are heading east, Jace. We're going to head in that direction, too. Get in touch with you as soon as possible, Mr. Warren. Let's go, Sheriff. Get up, John. Get up. been riding for over ten minutes, Jace. Shouldn't we be hearing from your plane? Uh, he's probably got more than he can do just keeping his eye on those pigeons. We'll hear from him. I sure hope it's soon. It gets dark early these days. Uh, it could be him coming in now. Unit 902 to Unit 10. Ooh, 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 boy. Unit 10 to 902. Go ahead. This unit has got off motor. I'm gliding to avoid detection. Is my signal clear? Signal clear, 902. Pigeons are now landing at Shack. Do east your former position. Shack located at base of hill, where dry wash makes horseshoe bend. That's the old Martinez shack, Jace. Been empty for years. Sounds like it's occupied now. Thanks, 902. We'll take it from here. Unit 10, clear. 10-4, 902, clear. How far is the Martinez shack from here, Sheriff? Four miles, maybe. Five at the most. And we got a knock on it, Sheriff. No telling what their plans are now. Get up, Chark. Come on, boy. That's it, Chase. Up ahead. Whoa, whoa, Charky. Whoa, boy. Easy. Whoa, boy. Whoa. 
We didn't make it any too soon. It's getting dark already. Better leave the horses here. Wonder if they're still inside the shack. There's your answer, Sheriff. Car hidden in that brush. Must have driven up this dry wash. Uh-huh. How do you figure to take him, Jase? Yeah, they won't be expecting us. Best way is to break in and get him before they can hurt that boy. If they haven't hurt him already. Yeah. When we get to the door, wait till I give the word to go in. Gotcha, Jase. Come on. Pigeons. At least we know we got the right place. Uh-huh. You ready, Sheriff? Whatever you say. I think we just nicked the other one. Oh, I'm hurt. I'm hurt bad. Ah, it's only your shoulder. Where's the boy? <laughs> in the back room. See if he's all right, Sheriff. Sure. Your name's Joe Wills? No. Joe's over there. Get me to a doctor, will you? Young Warren's all right, Jace. I'm untying him. Good. You must be Ben Morphy. Yeah. Get me to a doctor. Oh, my shoulder. There's nothing wrong with your legs, Ben. Get up. Long trip to Huntsville, and you're walking the first part. In just a moment, we will tell you the results of the case you have just heard. There's man-to-man adventure in store for you Tuesday night with Cavalcade of America and the Man Called X. Gregory Peck will be heard as a prisoner named Brown when Cavalcade of America tells the story of the man who instituted widespread prison reforms by becoming a voluntary inmate. It was in 1931 that Thomas Osborne, a former mayor of Auburn, New York, visited the governor of New York to see what could be done to make Sing Sing more effective. He saw the same men return again and again for new prison sentences. Working from the point of view that prisons should be repair shops and not scrap heaps, He entered the prison to find out firsthand about the conditions in penal institutions. His discoveries and improvements led to his becoming warden of the self-same prison in which he was a prisoner. You'll hear this story Tuesday on the Cavalcade of America. And also on Tuesday over most NBC stations, Herbert Marshall takes over as the man called X with stories of intrigue in the far-off corners of the world. Hear Herbert Marshall as the man called X Tuesday on this station of the NBC radio network. And now back to Tales of the Texas Rangers. And now, here are the results of the case you have just heard. Soon after the arrest, Ben Morphy confessed to the killing of the third member of the gang, Fred Meter. He was tried and convicted on dual counts of kidnapping and first-degree murder. On August 31st, 1941, he died in the electric chair at Huntsville Penitentiary. Next week, Joel McRae in another authentic reenactment of a case from the files of the Texas Rangers. cast included Tony Barrett, Bill Conrad, Ed Begley, Ernie Newton, and Bill Johnstone. Technical advisor was Captain M.T. Lone Wolf Gonzalez of the Texas Rangers. This story was transcribed and adapted by Charles E. Israel, and the program was produced and directed by Stacy Keith. Hal Gibney speaking. Next, it's the big show. All this and Tallulah, too, on NBC.